Hello YouTube, Captain Mac here and welcome to the full flight tutorial for the PMDG777, a tutorial that is long, long, long overdue. Uh, I'm sure some of you have probably asked for this in the past and recently somebody asked again and uh, the reality is I've been out for a while in case you haven't noticed. I, maybe you didn't, I don't know, but uh, for those of you that did notice or that for those of you that didn't notice, I've been gone for a little while. Uh, I got a million different things going on in life. Life's been busy, life's been hectic, life's been crazy. Uh, so I do apologize for the long absence and... Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm ready to start getting back into it, but I'm going to sort of ease my way in there because i got a lot of extra things going on that I didn't have going on before. And uh, so what I don't want to do is I don't want to get overwhelmed with the videos uh, and then get to a point where we end up with what just happened, which is I, I think it's been like three months since I made a video, and it's just like that's no good. I don't want to go that long without making videos. So that means uh, they may come a little less frequently rather than uh, I was trying to do once a week for a while there. It might be uh, every other week for a little while until I get some other things settled and uh, get rocking and rolling and then eventually uh, hopefully we'll get back to doing a week at a time. Uh, that being said, uh, somebody asked for this tutorial here and uh, like, like I said already, it's, it's long overdue. This is a tutorial I meant to do a long time ago and there's plenty of tutorials out there on the PMDG777 so I don't know why you want to watch mine except that I'm such a charming personality and everybody just loves to listen to me talk, right? Okay, so I'm going to take your silence as a yes, and we're going to carry on with that. Uh, that being said, what else? I, I think that's the third time I've said that being said already. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone on this one, actually. Uh, so somebody a long time ago asked me to do a flight into Memphis. And I had said that I would do that when uh, Good Scenery came out not long after FS Dream Team released their KMEM. Uh, but it was a little pricey at the time, or maybe it was the same price, I don't know, and I was just cheap. It could have been that too. Uh, but I held off, and uh, I stopped holding off, and I bought it today, actually. So we will be flying from Denver into Memphis, and we'll get to fly into that fine scenery. Now, along with that, I want to let you know that I have made the transition to P3D. Now, by that, I don't mean that all my flights will be in P3D from now on, because this is FSX right here, so obviously that's not the case. However, I will not purchase anything unless it is compatible with P3D version 4. So when I bought Memphis today, um, I bought it because it is uh, compatible with P3D version 4, but it's also for FSX. So I love it when I can get it for both of them because you know it's a win-win, but I don't have the 777 for P3D because why should I pay full price, in fact, even more money for the 777 than I paid for it in FSX. I really hate that. I mean, eventually, I'm sure I'll end up paying the money because, you know, obviously, PMDG is not going to have any sympathy for me and tell me, oh, we're so sorry. Here, you can have it for free. That's not going to happen. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so when I purchase anything, it has to be compatible with P3D version 4. Um, and so I, unless it is, unless that's the case, I won't be buying anything. Okay. Uh, I bought, yeah, I'm trying to get caught up here. See, this is a typical stumble and bumble my way through. I did buy the uh, Aerosoft CRJ for P3 version 4. For the love of my sanity, I never thought that thing would release. I mean, it's just insane how long it took. I'm sure some of you are wondering, why, well, why haven't you done a full flight tutorial on that one? Because I have two friends, two, count them, one, two. They actually just got married. So, uh, Kim and Chris, congratulations. Uh, shout out to you guys. They just got married the other day and they're on their honeymoon right now, but they are both captains for uh, one of the airlines, for a major airline, and they fly CRJ. So they're both captains in CRJs. And one or both of them are going to join me one day here at some point eventually and uh, make a uh, full flight tutorial for the uh, Aerosoft CRJ. So until I have them available, I'm not going to do that. So uh, you know, I don't care that everybody else is cranking them out. I don't. I don't care about cranking out videos. I care about getting stuff out there that I think you guys will enjoy it a lot more. Having, you know, an actual real-world captain on that aircraft doing that, doing that with me. Um, last thing I want to cover, maybe before we actually dive in here. Uh, this is my second attempt at recording this video. I actually was uh, at cruise altitude and I was listening to some of the uh, clips that I'd already recorded because I have this microphone. Um, 
called a blue ice or something weird like that. Anyway, it sounded really good until the engines were going, and then it sounded like hollow, like I was across the room. It was just terrible, and it's really unfortunate because I'm going to start a new series soon where uh, it's going to be me and somebody else, uh, and I'm not telling you who yet. It's going to be a surprise, but me and somebody else are going to be doing videos together for a new series, and I'm trying to figure out a way so that we can both be recorded at the same time. And so I've tried and tried to find a way to record two audio sources. And I know some of you are saying, oh, you just do this. It's Listen, I'm stupid when it comes to that stuff. I, I've been trying to figure it out. A couple of people have said, oh, yeah, you just download this, install that, blah, 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 blah. And all I hear is wah, 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 because I can't figure this stuff out. So unless you're able to walk me through it step by step, uh, I, I do appreciate it. But it's not helping me. I can't figure it out. So... I'm trying to figure out a way to be able to record from two audio sources at the same time so that we can both wear a headset and would be golden. But I haven't been able to do that. So I thought, okay, let me get a microphone, stick it in front of us, and that'll work great. Well, it seemed to be working great, but then I went back and listened to some of the clips and the audio was terrible. So I'm doing this obviously on a headset so the audio is not so crappy. So I don't know. So if you guys have any suggestions, please feel free to throw them down in the comments or send me an email or something because I need some help with that. It's killing me. All right. I think I've yapped on long enough about that. I don't think there's anything else I need to cover. So without further ado, let's jump into the cockpit pit flight deck whatever you want to call it here there she is love this aircraft by the way so this is a full flight tutorial if you're not familiar with my full flight tutorials what this is is this is taking the aircraft from a cold and dark state as you can see the aircraft is cold and dark from a cold and dark state all the way through the startup procedures taxi takeoff cruise descent landing shutdown okay it does not in any way encompass every aspect of this aircraft to do so would take hours if you don't know there's uh, the two fcom manuals are 1200 pages each just just chew on that for a second 1200 pages each okay this this full flight tutorial is not about learning every aspect or every detail of this aircraft there will be things well why didn't you cover this why didn't you do that why didn't you do this why didn't you do that stop just stop that's not what a full flight tutorial is about and I don't have time to do that stuff anyway. A full flight tutorial is how do you get the aircraft from its current state, cold and dark, which is not the normal state you would get an aircraft in in the real world. Anyway, ask any real world pilot and they'll tell you. Nonetheless, from cold and dark all the way through back to cold and dark. That's what this is all about. And, uh, and, and it's meant to familiarize you with the aircraft and make it so that you can get out there and fly it. Now, we do follow checklists. We are going to use to the... To the best of our ability, real-world procedures here, not using ATC, don't want to have that discussion. Uh, but for the for the most part, we're using real-world procedures, um, and we're not abbreviating or cutting corners or anything like that, but we're just we're keeping it simple. Uh, you know, start up, taxi, take off, land, shut down. Okay, that's that's what a full flight tutorial is. So if you're not familiar with it, now you are. So enjoy the show. So with that being said, what do you say we jump right into our pre-flight checklist? And as you can see here, the first two things on there are the block fuel and the payload. Problem is, you can't really do that until you turn the battery on, which is much further down this list, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me because you can't really access. I suppose, I mean, without the power on, you might be. I haven't tried it. Maybe you can turn these on without the power on. Just hold the menu button down and see if it comes on. Hey, it does. So there's no power on the aircraft, but the FMC works. So I guess that's why that's why it's telling you to do that. I don't know. I, I don't think that would work in the real aircraft, right? I really don't think it would. I really don't. So with that being said, let's try and keep it as realistic as we can. Jump up to the overhead. Here's your battery right here. Click that bad boy on. Now we've got some power, but we don't want to ride on the battery, right? That's no good. So then you would you would make sure your ground connections are run. So wheel chocks have to be set for any ground connections to work here. And then we've got it set to two plugs, and it's dual jetway plugs. Now I know there's no jetway here because we're in a cargo ramp. That's fine. Not a problem. Sorry, I shrunk down my checklist there. Uh, we're still going to use this to connect our, uh, our ground power, right? So as soon as I flip that to connected, we jump back up top here, and you can see we got ground power available on the primary and the secondary. So let's turn both of those on, and now we got all these lights and bells and whistles and stuff like that going on. Now we've got power on the aircraft. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Now the catch is, it takes a minute for everything to fire up here, and I've got it set to realistic. So these screens do not come on immediately. You can change that setting in the in the aircraft settings in here. You can change it so that the screens, uh, the the brightness of the screens or whatever, come on immediately. But I left it to realistic, so it takes a minute for them actually to come on. 
which is just an opportunity for me to run my mouth and everybody knows I like to talk so we'll put the parking brake on because that's on the checklist anyway battery switch is already on um, okay there we go now it's coming up so let's take care of these real quick uh, we're gonna do fuel now flight plan flight plan calls for 34,462 pounds of fuel however the default setting inside the PMDG for reserve fuel is 16,000 pounds you can see that here in a little bit so if I put it as 34,000 or even 35,000 pounds of fuel it's gonna tell us that we don't have enough fuel we're gonna keep getting that uh, insufficient fuel warning which is really obnoxious so to avoid that what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put 45,000 pounds of fuel in there I know that's more than we need but that's what I'm gonna do okay so 45,000 and you can see it's still only 14% of the fuel. I mean, it's nothing, right? And then as far as the payload goes, uh, let's go back here to payload. It's got 77,000 pounds in it. We were actually scheduled for like 83,000, so uh, we're good. We're close enough as far as I'm concerned, so I'm not worried about it. So that's good as well. So just click that to the menu, go over to the FMC, and we're done with that for the moment. Okay, we're not messing with the FMC anymore for a few minutes. We need to hop up top here, and we're going to take care of the rest of our pre-flight stuff. So the battery switch is already on. We see that over here. And of course, we've got the ground power on. Now the primary flight computers need to be set to auto and the guard needs to be closed. That's this right here. So if you left click it, it pops up. You can see it's on auto. Left click it again to close it down. So on auto and the guard closed. Thrust asymmetry compensation needs to be to auto. That's this switch right here. And it is set to auto. APU gen switch needs to be on. That's this guy right here, and save ourselves the hassle later, just put this to on, not start. We're not starting the APU yet, so just right click it once and put it to the on position. That turn this light off right here. If you look over here, this, well, it's staying off now, but when you turn that to the on position, it turned, this light went out here, which is gonna be just one of those checks that we do later on. So that's what I do there. Uh, IFE passenger seats, that's not even in this aircraft. I looked and looked and looked. It's not in this aircraft. It's just not a passenger aircraft. It's a cargo aircraft, so it makes sense, right? Cabin utility needs to be on. Okay, my brain just went completely blank. Cabin utility needs to be on. Right here. Right in front of my face. Cabin utility is on. Uh, left and right bus tie switches need to be to auto. Left bus tie, right bus tie, both on auto, so those are good to go. Left and right generator control switches both need to be on. That's these two down here. Left gen control, right gen control. Those are both on. Now, I know the light says off. Okay, we're not worried about that though. If I click this, you see the on disappeared, right? So it's on. The light says off because it's it's technically off. It's like an auto setting, right? Okay. Uh, backup generator switches need to be on. That's the two in the middle here. Same thing. They are on, but they're not currently functioning. That's why it says off. Uh, APU selector switch, it says start and then on. We're not starting the APU yet because I'm not going to burn the fuel, right? So I'm not going to start the APU right now. I don't need to. But we'll come back and we'll start it in a little bit. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, nav lights need to be on. Technically not because we're not turning the APU on yet, but I'm going to turn those and the wing lights on anyway because I'll probably forget later. You know I'll forget later. Uh, logo light and cockpit light as needed. We don't need those right now. Emergency exit lights need to be armed and the guard closed. That's this guy up here. And it's actually off right now. So put it in the armed position. Left click it once, then left click the cover to close it. And you're good to go. Left and right pack control switches to auto. you got to jump over here. That's these two. They're just, see it just says off. But if you click them, now it says auto and off. All right, so that's what we want right there. And then the Adaroo, jumping back to this side, needs to be on. And that's to start the uh, alignment of the IRS. That's what the Adaroo is. It's the same thing as the IRS in the 737. And then that takes us to the last item on the checklist, which is the FMC initialization. In this case, it's just position initialization. So we jump down here, and what we're going to do is click on the position initialization button or line select key. All right click on that and it doesn't say anything yet it just says set inertial position we're waiting for the boxes to show up but while we're waiting and they just popped in there but you can go to the next page and grab the GPS setting even before the boxes pop up and then once they pop up you just put it in there and you're good to go and there you go and that's gonna help to align the IRS now usually what I do is I start diving in right here and I take care of the FMC setup but you're actually not supposed to well I mean you can but it comes later on uh, it actually comes in the next checklist which is the uh, cockpit preparation checklist so we're gonna dive into that and we'll get to the FMC when it says to so 
cockpit preparation checklist please we gotta hop back up top for this one too so first things first the window heat needs to be on that's these four right here and hey look at that all four of them are on fantastic primary left and right engine hydraulic pump switches need to be on primary left engine on primary right engine on okay and I'm highlighting these as you go uh, that's an editing trick by the way just in case you're wondering those little boxes popping up those little red boxes that's an editing trick for the for the video editing process right now while I'm talking in the real world or in real time those bo those little red boxes are not there right now okay so but I'm popping those up so that it's easier to find these because otherwise you end up searching all over this overhead until you get used to it okay uh, primary C1 and C2 electric hydraulic pump switches off that's primary C1 and C2 these two right here and they're off okay if you click it it would turn on I'm not gonna click it right now they're off if they were on it would say on or auto uh, left C1 C2 and right demand hydraulic pump selectors off that's these four down here so this is the demand right demand this is the left C1 C2 and right are all in the off position that's where we want them to be no smoking signs seat belts all that on auto that's these right here there's no no smoking sign because it's not a passenger aircraft uh, EEC mode switches normal jump up here this is the EEC mode switches those are both on normal so we're good on those as well engine start selectors both to normal that's these two knobs down here they are both on normal so we're good on those uh, auto start switch is on and it is uh, what else left forward fuel pump pressure light should be off that's this one right here left forward fuel pump the pressure light is off and that went off when we turned the APU switch to the on position if we had not done that you can alternatively just click on it and it'll turn the light off so just something to keep in mind uh, wing and engine anti-ice auto or as needed and we leave all those on auto it, why not why wouldn't you leave them on auto right just makes sense to me <laughs> Equipment cooling needs to be on auto. That's jumping up over to the top here. This is the equipment cooling. It is on auto. And then it says gasper switch on. There is no gasper switch in here. And if it if there is, please, please point it out to me because I've looked everywhere. There is a gasper switch in the 737. Uh, and I'm used to clicking on that thing. But there's no gasper switch in here. So if there is and I just can't find it because I'm stupid, please point it out to me. Uh, Recirc fan switches need to be on this one right next to it. And they are... Uh, flight deck temperature control selectors auto or as desired that's these three knobs right here we're gonna leave them on auto and they're good to go like that so easy days left and right pack control switches both the auto left and right both the auto so we're good to go on those left and right trim air switches on that's the two in the middle right here and they're both on so we're golden left center and right isolation valve switches all to auto that's these three here and they are all on auto and then your uh, engine and APU bleed air switches on and or auto so left engine right engine are both on and then APU bleed air is on auto so we're good there as well uh, pressurization panel set and on auto we just leave it on auto and not mess with that either don't mess with pressurization trust me don't do it it's you, you're just gonna screw it up just like I did <laughs> don't mess with it uh, we get the ATIS says to obtain the ATIS we can grab that just using active sky real quick drag it over here for you and uh, we're looking at I, I better write this down because you know I'll mess it up so the wind is 233 at 8 knots and the altimeter is 2984 partly cloudy visibility is good so not worried about that shrink that down and then that takes us to our FMC programming alright so this is not hard to do now every well, I was going to say everybody knows, but anybody who knows me or watches my videos, especially, uh, you know, the more recent ones, knows that I use PFPX. Okay, so I've created a flight plan with PFPX. That's where this came from, from PFPX. This is, this is what it generated. And then I saved it in the appropriate folder that allows me to use the route request function on here. Okay, route request is the way to go. It's very simple and it's more realistic so a cars which we use for our virtual airline right to communicate with the virtual airline tell what we're doing all that stuff in the real world a car is a real thing where the aircraft is able to communicate with the company right and that's that's part of what this is so the route request you would request a route now for us obviously it's a little different than how it would be in the real world but we're requesting a route there's the route we're requesting highlight that and click request and so now it says route requesting alternatively I just like totally 
like turn down my microphone or something. So now I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to pause the video for a second and make sure that the sound's not cut out. So hold on just a second. Okay, so I just double checked the recording and it didn't seem to make any difference as far as the recording goes. But anyway, what I was saying is alternatively you could just type in the company route here. Uh, we're not gonna do that. So we've requested the route, the route up link is there, now we can load the route. Okay, and so now it's gonna load it and you'll see it'll pop it in here, it'll say KDEN KMM03. So we could have typed that in there just like you would in, uh, you know, in the 737 or whatever and you'd be good to go. But we didn't do that. We're gonna put in flight number is gonna be 2336 because that's the flight number I use. We're gonna activate that, execute, and then our performance initialization page. Now we could click on zero fuel weight, we get the numbers down here, and then we could put the numbers in there and on and on we go but you see all of a sudden all these numbers are populated right that's because the uh, request that we put in is also it also requested performance data for us and so all this performance data has already been done up for us you got your flight level you got your reserves remember I said those were 16,000 feet and so on so we can either reject or accept this if you don't like these numbers or you want to change something whatever you can just reject it if you want for me I'm gonna make it simple well, let me clear that out and I'm just gonna accept it so now all my numbers are in there I don't have to mess with it okay this stuff is not hard though don't worry about the wind data uplink I'm not using that just so you know if I had decided not to use that if you click on zero fuel weight when there's nothing in there click on it once it'll put those numbers down here click on it again it puts them in there it fills in the gross weight blah 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 all that stuff gets filled out for you anyway you put in your cruise altitude your cost index and you're done it's really it's no different than using the FMC in the 737 if you've watched any videos on that then you know if you have never used this FMC then you probably shouldn't be flying the 777 right now I'm just saying listen don't get offended by it don't get your butt hurt okay I know some people probably don't want to hear that if you bought the PMDG 777 and you've never flown the uh, like a PMDG or an iFly 737 or something like that you probably jumped into too big an aircraft to start out the FMC is exactly the same. Most of you know what I'm talking about too. You should work your way up to something like this. But anyway, if you did buy it and you want a little more information on how to set this thing up, just go back and look at, uh, I think I did a tutorial on ground operations for the PMDG 737. It's exactly the same setting up the FMC in this thing as it is in that thing. So there we go. I talked about that long enough. Move on to thrust limit. I'm just going to leave it on full thrust. I don't really care. Uh, that's going to work fine for me on this one. I'm not really that worried about it. You know, I don't need a D-rated thrust. Uh, I could use one. I just don't. I just don't want to. Go to the takeoff page. So in here, we're going to do flaps 15. Now I know somebody's already screaming. Why well, ah, you're light? You could you could do flaps five. Blah. No, I'm not worried about it. I'm doing flaps 15. Okay, guys. So that's what we're going to go with. Flaps 15 in there. For the center of gravity, just like you would do with the zero fuel weight, click once, and you see it puts the number down here in the scratch pad, and then click again. It's going to populate that number there. It's going to do your trim for you. But notice there's no V speeds in there right now. That's because we haven't set up our departure yet. The This aircraft is not going to, and it's the same in the 737, it's not going to calculate your V speeds until it knows what runway you're going to be using. So we want to go ahead and put our departure in there. So click on that, <coughs> and we're taking the EPKEY 4 departure. All right, so we're it's obviously it's not here, right? This goes to Eons Five. So we hit next page. Hey, look, there it is, Epke Four. Now, when you look at our flight plan, which uh, I flashed it up here briefly, but I also showed it with the little fancy graphic at the beginning there. Uh, after Epke Four is Gator, G A T T R. Well, look at that. That's one of the transitions. So we'll select Gator as well. Now we got to decide what runway we're taking. The wind is 233 at eight. So if I look over here, let me shrink that down out of the way for a minute. And let's drag our uh, Navigraph Charts Cloud over here for just a second. For those of you who do not remember, I'm using the Navigraph Charts Cloud because I think it's pretty awesome. There's us right there, by the way. Okay, so the wind's 230. This is just the easiest way to pick a runway, okay? You can have a runway assigned to you. I'm not using ATC or anything like that, so we're not, we're not going to get all worked up about this. So <clears throat> the wind is 233 at 8 knots. Best two runways are runway 25 and runway 26. And it's a long taxi for either one of these. Uh, realistically, 2.5 is probably a little bit closer. Uh, we could go up mic and uh, whatever this is. I can't even tell on this. And let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, what is that? Hotel maybe? No, hotel's over here. Golf. I don't even know what that is. I'd have to pull up the inset. I'm not going to do that. We can cross over here and go to 2.5. Or we can go all the way down here and then all the way down here and take 2.6. 
Either way, it's a pretty long taxi. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to keep it simple as possible, and we'll brief it during the taxi, but we're going to use runway 26. So let me put this back over here, get it out of the way, make sure my checklist is up, and there we go. So we said we're going to use runway 26. Notice 26 doesn't show up right now. It's real simple. Just hit next page. Still not showing up. Might be 25, actually. Yeah, it's 25. Okay, so the difference is this. Uh, what's the date on this chart? This chart is 28 July 2017. So the chart is updated. So the runway is 26 now. However, uh, at some point it was 25. You know, that doesn't actually make sense to be honest with you because I've got current uh, nav data in here. So it should be runway 26 on the chart and... Oh, don't mind me. I'm retarded. There is a runway 25. Is runway 26 just not showing up? That's what it is. It's, it's not giving me the option of taking runway 26. See that? 8, 16. Because runway 25 was the other one we were talking about. Yeah, it doesn't give me the option for runway 26. I guess we're taking 25 then. Runway 25 it is. So we're going to take the crazy taxi across there. That should be fun. So once you get, once you select those, hit execute, and you're good to go. Go over to your legs page. You can see it's got its vectors, then Epke, Clamor, Weeds. Because we're taking off the opposite direction of... Uh, of Come on, brain. See, my brain's not going to function, guys. Taking off the o opposite direction of the way the departure is set up. But we can still use that departure. That, so that's why we have vectors in there. Okay. Is everybody tracking on that? <laughs> Don't worry. I'm confused, too. It's been a while. Okay. So we've got our FMC set up. We're going to go there. Uh, next thing on the flight list is to set up our MCP. That's your mode control panel. Your autopilot stuff. That's what MCP is. All right. So, we want to do, let's see, we want to make sure, let's just go from left to right. Altimeter needs to be set 2984. So, 7654, for those of you who can't see it, there it is, 2984. So, we're going to go on the altimeter now. This is supposed to be set to your V2 speed, which, if we go to our init reference, pop it up, it's 145. So, set this to 145. Uh, the heading should be the runway heading, actually, which is 263. Scroll that down. And then, technically, you're supposed to put your first altitude restriction in here, which we do have one of 10,000 feet. So I'm going to leave that at 10,000 feet because I messed it up last time. Let's make sure our flight directors are on. LNAV and VNAV are both armed. And we're good to go. Let's clear all those out for now because those are just going to come back right now. Why is it showing toga? It's not in Toga right now, is it? Shouldn't be. Toga. I don't know. I don't recall if it shows Toga before you actually hit the Toga button. I don't know. It is what it is, guys. Uh, we haven't done V-Speeds yet, by the way. But because we have our runway information in there now, you can just click there and confirm them. Now we've got V-Speeds, and that thing will stop giving us the no V-Speeds warning. Don't mind me. I'm a little confused and trying to get caught up. What else we got here? Flight instruments set, no flags. We're good on those. Auto brake needs to be to RTO. That's this guy down here. Roll it down to the RTO and you're good to go. Uh, we're not setting up the radios because we're not going to use them. We do need to test and set the transponder, which is way down here. So let's start it testing while we set it. You'll hear it here in a second. I'll say it's good. TCAS test pass. Sweet. And then I actually uh, remember from trying to do this video earlier that you turn it on in the uh, before takeoff checklist, I think. So we'll just leave it on standby for now and we should be good to go there. This thing, I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to do anything with that. We'll leave it as is. Okay, aileron rudder trim set to zero units. Sets these two way down here. Aileron trim, rudder trim. We don't. I don't mess with those anyway. I don't. I don't use them, so we're good to go on those. Beacon. Nope, wrong list. <laughs> uh, taxi and takeoff briefing. Taxi and takeoff briefing will actually take place during the taxi. That's how I like to do it. So we're not going to do those here. So as far as we're concerned, that is done. Now. That's going to take us to our before start checklist. However, for some of this to work properly, we need to have the APU running now. So let's go ahead and start the APU by hopping up top here. Very simple. Everything's already been set up for this, so all we got to do is right click this once. There we go. I, didn't, I wasn't sure if it did it that the first time. And now the APU is starting up. And if we want to check on that, if you click on status, I'll pop it up for you. There's the APU spinning up right there. So we're going to go on that. 
while that's spinning up. If you are not aware, there's a checklist function built into this thing, but it is not complete. It doesn't have all the stuff we're going over right now. So like here's your pre-flight checklist, oxygen tested and set. I'm not even going to mess with it, but you can test the oxygen on this thing. So we can just check that one off. Flight instruments, heading altimeter, we've already set those, so we're going to go on that. And that's checklist complete because the parking brake is set and fuel control switches are cut off already. Okay, so if we click on normal, it takes us right to the next checklist, which is the before start checklist. It skipped most of the pre-flight stuff, and it skipped all of the cockpit preparation stuff. Okay, we've got the MCP set, so we can check that off. Takeoff speeds are set, we can check that off. CDU pre-flight is good, we can set that off. We can't do the trim yet, because you actually have to have the hydraulics to do the trim. We won't have that until we start the engine, so we can't do that one. Taxi and takeoff brief, I'm not worried about that one right now. We do need to bring the beacon light on, and you'll see, once I bring the beacon light on, that it automatically checked that one off. So now we can't do anything else with this checklist until we um, until we can set the trim, which is kind of weird the way that's set up. So APU should be up and running now. Let's go ahead and check that real quick. Status, yep, it's at 100%. So we're good to go on that. Let's put that back to the engine page. So if we hop up top here, you'll see we don't actually need this anymore. So we can we can turn off the primary, ex the uh, secondary already turned itself off, and then hop back down. Here's a lot of back and forth, isn't there? Uh, go back to FS actions, ground connections. Remember, we've got our parking brake on right there, so we can actually take the wheel chocks off too. So disconnect the ground power, take the wheel chocks off, put this bad boy back over to the FMC, and we're raring to go. So now, let's take a look at our before start checklist. Cabin and cargo doors need to be closed and armed. We can check those by clicking on doors here. There it is armed and if they were open it would tell you they were open trust me it would definitely tell you they were open put that back to the engine page for now external power and air is disconnected we just took care of that right electric demand hydraulic pump selector needs to go to auto that's this guy right here right click it once puts it on auto primary c1 and c2 electric hydraulic pump switches need to go on that's these two here those are both on now <coughs> left electric demand hydraulic pump selector goes to auto there we go and it for I think this is a specific order to be honest with you now C1 and C2 air demand hydraulic pump selectors go to auto C1 C2 I don't know I think you're supposed to go right then these two then this one then these two I don't know that's the way it's set up on the checklist so that's the way I did it uh, left and right fuel pump switches on so all the fuel pump switches on <coughs> And we don't need the center ones because we don't have any fuel in the center tank. So if you turn them on, it's just going to give you a pressure fault anyway. So we'll just leave those off. Uh, Seatbelt signs on. We're good on those. Beacon light is on. Recall switch push. So if we come down here, if you push recall, engines are shut down and TCAS is off. That makes sense. We can cancel that out so we don't have to look at it. And that takes us right to the engine start. Of course, we do need to push back first. So let's go ahead and take the brake off. Uh, my GSX is not installed or it's just not working. I don't know which anymore. So shift P <coughs> to push it back and then hit the number one and it should uh, start uh, turning. It'll move the turn the nose to the right tail to the left here in just a minute. So while she's backing up, we can go right into the engine start checklist. Uh, we set this guy to engine by just clicking on the engine button right here. That puts this one on engine. There it is. Fantastic. Engine start, announce, announce that you're starting the engine. See, it's turning the aircraft. Uh, yeah, we're starting the engine. So the engine start selector, make it so you can see this a little better. These two up here, left click it to put it to the start position. Wrong button. And then add the fuel. You don't need to wait for the N2 to come up to a certain percentage or anything like that. He turned it way too early. He would have ran right into those things. <clears throat> and the engine will start spooling up. So if you look down here, you can see the N2 is coming up on its own. It doesn't say anything about waiting till a certain percentage. Now, maybe you're supposed to. I don't know, but I just throw it on right away. I haven't had any problems with it, but it's also a simulator, right? I know somebody's screaming at the screen right now. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sounds good, doesn't it? Those engines sound good in this aircraft. That little click was the start selector going off. That's plenty far. Stop right there. Park and brake on. Let the engine stabilize, which is just about stabilized now. And then we'll go for the right engine, which is this switch over here. Same thing, left click it to start and then throw the fuel on. Bam. Same process. 
Sorry, I had to switch windows for a second. So now we just wait for it to start up. While it's starting up, we can go through some of our other flows. Taxi light's going to have to come on. That's this guy right here. Let me show you this. So taxi light's right there. We don't need the logo lights. We're good on those. All of this stuff's going to take care of itself. We're going to do it. We're going to have a before taxi checklist that's going to go through this anyway. So um, actually, there's really nothing to do <laughs> now that I think about it. We do nothing but wait. I need to set this as a view. I need a drink of water. Stand by. Boy, that one took its time, huh? Seems to be running now. Okay, let's take a look at our before taxi checklist, which is sort of like your after start checklist as well. Left and right generator control switches should be on and lights off. <coughs> okay, left generator control, right generator control, both on and the lights are off. APU selector switch goes off. We don't need the APU anymore, so let's turn it off. Uh, engine start selectors both to normal, that's these two, and they are both normal. Left and right pack control switches should be on auto and the lights off. They're both on auto, but the lights haven't gone off yet. There's nothing you can do. They're going to turn off in a minute. While I'm talking, you're going to see them go off, so just watch for that. Left center and right isolation valve switches auto and lights off, that's these three. They are auto and the lights are off. Engine bleed, uh, engine bleed air switches uh, on with lights off. So left engine, right engine, both on, lights off, APU can stay on auto. I promise you those lights will turn off. Uh, flaps, we need to set and confirm. There they go. Lights turned off right there. Set and confirm the flaps. So flaps, we're going to do 15. That's what we said. So I'm going to set flaps 15. And there's two places to check it. It's going to pop up on here. There you go. Flaps 15. And then if you're not sure, you don't trust that or something like that, you can zip over here and there you can see we're set at flaps 15. So we're going to go on that. Uh, well, stabilizer trim. I'm glad this is here because otherwise I would forget. Since you can't do it until you have hydraulic power, and we need to be set at three on our trim. So trim it down until I get to three, and we're good to go. I, I've been saying we're good to go a lot, right? We're good to go. Good to go. Anyway, that's all set. Stabilizer trim is good. Flight controls free and correct. If you go over and click on this button right here, that's your flight controls. Pop those up. I want you to pay attention to how slowly these respond on here that's one thing you need to know about the triple seven when you're flying it is the controls do not seem to respond very quickly it could just be the sim i don't know but anyway full left see it takes a second for him to get there right full right same thing it takes a little second for him to get there and then neutral same thing when you go up full up full down neutral and then the rudder full left the rudder seems to be the slowest full right see I'm full right and just now got there and then neutral so just something to keep in mind flight controls do not seem to move quite as quick as you'd like them to but that takes care of our flight controls check recall switch push it that's this one over here click TCAS is still off I'm gonna leave that up there I'm not gonna cancel it out. I want to leave it up there so I don't forget to turn TCAS on a little bit later uh, wing, in, wing and engine anti-ice auto or as need. We just leave it on auto. We're good. Taxi lights already on. We don't need runway turnoff lights. So we're going to go on that. And that takes us all the way up to our before takeoff checklist. So we're pretty much ready to taxi out here. So what I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to pause the video, make sure I didn't miss anything because we all know I missed stuff. And then I'm going to hop back on and we'll taxi out and we'll go from there. All right. So I managed to not miss anything, which means we're pretty much ready to rock and roll here after I shrink that down and get out of the way. Um... Yeah, we're ready to go. We already got all our taxi checklists and all that stuff done. So, brakes off. Bring throttle up. Track IR coming on here. A little jump. Boom. It's nowhere near as bad of a jump with uh, Chase Plane, which is what I'm using now, instead of Easy Dock. So, the Easy Dock, it would jump pretty bad, but I like Chase Plane. I like it a lot, by the way. So, if you haven't tried it out or you don't know what it is or something, check it out. Chase Plane. Now I hear Easy Dock 2 is pretty darn good. Now I don't know if I ever shared my thoughts on this, but I'm going to go ahead and share them right now just because. Because I know you want to hear it. So I used Easy Dock for the longest time and it was the only program out there that allowed you to move around the flight deck, change views, you know, with just the push of a button and stuff like that, right? And it was fantastic and I loved it. It had plenty of quirks and issues and problems, but overall it wasn't a terrible program. <coughs> However, the guy who made it, I don't know anything about him, I don't know him personally, so this isn't personal, this is just my opinion. The guy who made it didn't do anything with it. He stopped doing updates for it, he didn't do anything with it. He just said, eh, it is what it is, suck it up, because there was there was no competitor out there at all, right? 
Well, then along comes Chase Plane. Now, Chase Plane was in development for a long time, and they're still working on it. Uh, they're not still working on it. It's not the right term. Uh, they're still improving it. They're, they're still improving it. It is compatible with P3D version 4, uh, and obviously with FSX and so on. So, great program. Really like it. So, here's the thing. As soon as Chase Plane was about to release, all of a sudden the guy who made Easy Dot Camera is like, Oh, yeah, I'm going to make a version 2. Which supposedly is a lot better than version one, but still, really, you you didn't do anything until you had a competitor, and that really actually ticked me off. I think that was messed up. I think it was a really shady business practice. Basically, to me, now I'm not saying this is what this is, you know, what what this guy, you know, whoever he is that made it. I'm not saying this is what he was saying, but to me, it felt like he was saying, yeah, you know what. Um, I'm the only option you have, so either take it or leave it, and I just don't care. But when there was another option, all of a sudden, it was like, oh, yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to make something better. And I just didn't like that. That just felt really disgusting to me, to be honest with you. I don't know any other way to put it. So I was all about Chase Plane when it came out, and uh, my daughter actually bought it for me as a birthday present, and I love it. It is fantastic. It does have a little quirk I noticed in... Uh, P3D where I cannot get the cinematic mode to work uh, when I'm playing doing a playback so you guys know I do the cinematic videos by uh, recording with FS recorder but there is no FS recorder for P3D and I don't know if there's any intention to make one but I doubt it which means you have to use the internal recording feature which is fine except that for some reason chase plane seems to struggle uh, well, that struggle is not even the word. It just the cinematic does not work properly when doing a playback, and so I think I'm going to report that to him because I've reported something to him before. I forget what it was, but I told him about an issue I was having. They responded to my email. I'm a nobody, okay? I'm not. It's not like I'm a famous YouTuber here, okay? I've got you know like 5,000 subscribers. I love all of you, by the way. I got like 5,000 subscribers. I don't have 70,000 like some YouTubers out there, right? So I throw an email over there. They're not like saying, oh, Captain Mac. No, they're just like, who's this guy? <laughs> okay. But they responded to me. And they were like, oh, hey, yeah, thanks for telling us about the issue. And we'll work on it. And then they fixed it. I don't even remember what it was. But they fixed it. So, yeah, good stuff. Great team over there. So if you don't have a program for uh, changing your views and stuff, I highly recommend Chase Plane. I really do. And they're not, they're not paying me to say that. So I wish they would, though. Hey, guys from Chase Plane, you want to pay me to endorse that that'd be that'd be awesome by the way anyway moving on so we need to take care of our taxi and departure briefing because I'm too busy running my mouth here so while we're taxiing out this ridiculously long taxi and I need to remember we're going to runway 25 um, let's take care of that taxi and departure briefing shall we all right folks let's take a look at this taxi round here real quick we are over here at the cargo ramp we're gonna screw it out here on Sierra Charlie and take it all the way down to Mike we're going to take Mike up to whatever this is. Uh, I think it's Alpha Alpha or something like that. We can actually zoom this in a little for you. We're going to cut across here now. Um, obviously, I'm recording this after the fact. I can tell you right now that aircraft should not have gone under this little bridge here. Uh, but it did. So, <laughs> um, my bad. Anyway, scoot all the way across here to Golf, And then we'll head on down Golf to hold short of runway 25 for our departure. Pretty straightforward. Uh, but it is actually quite a long taxi. So, that being said, let's go ahead and hop over and take care of our departure briefing. Alright, it's going to be the Epke 4 RNAV departure today. A uh, whole lot of information on here. Um, talking about the SID requires takeoff minimums, runway 7, 26 not authorized, ATC, runway 8, blah, 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 and on and on and on it goes. Uh, there's a ton of information on this, but we're going to keep it as simple as we can. We are using runway 25 over here, which is 263 degrees is our heading. And it's vectors right out the gate, so we're going to fly straight out for just a little bit. And then we're going to flip it around here. Uh, actually, we're not going to go to Kidding. We're coming around to... which one? I don't remember. Uh, no, I think we are coming to Kidding, but we're going to come left around to Kidding, if I remember correctly. And then from there on to Piddle... <laughs> Piddle. <laughs> and then to Apu, and then Epke, out to Clamor, uh, Weeds, and then Gator from there, and then on course. Now there is a uh, at or below 10,000 foot restriction here for kidding, so we need to keep that in mind. Uh, I think we end up bypassing it though, if I remember correctly. Again, I'm recording this after the fact, so maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. 
but it is what it is. So if we're going to go kidding, we'll need to stay at or below 10,000 feet. Otherwise, we should be good to go all the way up to flight level 390. That is your departure briefing. All right, after quite a long taxi there, uh, we're coming up on our runway 25 here, and I have absolutely no doubt that that was not the appropriate taxi route. There's no way this aircraft would have fit underneath that bridge, whatever it is. I don't know if that's a walkway or what, but this aircraft, there's no way it would have fit under there. It's a 42-foot uh, clearance, and I'm quite certain that the tail of this aircraft is substantially higher than 42 feet, <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. Um, and so <laughs> we squeeze through there. I have the, the damage or crashes and damage turned off just because I've had other aircraft suddenly appear on taxiways and all kinds of weird stuff. But anyway, so we're about to hold short here of runway 25 now. Uh, just as a friendly reminder, you're supposed to stop where you can still see the hold short lines. And so in reality, let me turn track IR off here, a little jump. Uh, if you were to look outside the aircraft right now, we are a long way back from that line but that's because it's even harder to be able to see that line without being able to look forward and up over the nose. So we're pretty far back, but that's all right. Let's go ahead and take care of our before takeoff checklist real quick. Landing lights need to come on. Those are these three right here, one, two, and three. Runway turnoff lights can come on. Strobe lights need to come on. TCAS needs to come on down here. I'm just literally rolling right through this. Most of this stuff, you know, after you do this for a while, even though I've been out of it for a little while, you know, it's it's pretty natural actually. It's just there's a flow to things, right? We need to turn traffic mode on. That's on the uh, 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 range knob here right in the center. So you see there's a little hand there and then there's a pointer. If you click on that, you see the rings pop up there. That's your traffic mode. That's so the aircraft actually show up on our radar screen there. And then we're supposed to start the clock. So if you just click, if you click on where it says uh, CHR or Chrono here, if you click it once, it starts. If you click it again, it stops, and then click it a third time, it clears it. So we need to start the clock. Clock is running. Little jump from track IR. There it is. Let's uh, start advancing forward here and make sure that our approach path is clear, which it is. Make sure there's nobody coming the other way. There does not appear to be. I do have a little bit of AI traffic turned on, so you never know when an airplane will show up going the wrong direction on the road. We're going down the wrong runway, coming opposite of you. So, on we go here. Not much to say at the moment because we're taxiing onto the runway. You may have heard the uh, RAS call out, Runway uh, Advisory and Alert System, I think is what it stands for. Correct me if I'm wrong, please, down in the comments. I don't mind. So, we'll get her out here. We are not going to need all of this runway, that's for certain, but no point in uh, sucking up any runway that we don't need to, so make a nice tight turn onto here and try and line her up. And I'm just going to roll right into the takeoff. I'm not going to come to a complete stop. So as we turn around here and start to line up, we'll start to bring the throttles up a little bit. There you go, there's the notification, runway 25. That's the runway we want to be on, so that's good. We've already set our runway heading into the MCP. Start bringing those throttles up as we center up on the runway here. Bring the throttles up a little past 50, I think is what it is. Let them stabilize and then hit toga. There she goes. Watch our speed indicator. Listen for the call outs and look for anything going wrong that might cause us to have to reject takeoff. She's picking up speed fast. There's 100 knots right there. Away we go. Following the flight director so we don't smack the tail on the ground. Looking good so far. Positive rate of climb gear coming up. Following the flight director still. Little crosshairs in the middle. Notice the flaps 15 is green right now, which means I can actually go to the next flap setting down. You'll see the 5 will show up here in a second, and it's magenta. And it'll stay magenta until it says I can go past it. It's green now, which means I can go past it. And if you're unsure, you can also look on here. And there's our uh, D-cell height there. So start bringing that nose down. Way down. Ooh. So the speed has to be past the up before we can bring flaps all the way up. All right, that's how it's supposed to work. Boy, that's not being friendly with us at all, is it? Now it wants us to go nose way up. That's annoying. Anyway. 
So we're trying to follow the flight director obviously without overcorrecting. A little bit of nose down trim is needed here. There we go. And we're supposed to stay below 10,000. So let's go ahead and hit the autopilot on. Let her take over here. That'll get our speed where we want to track our air coming off. Little jump here. Boom. There it is. We can go ahead and bring those flaps all the way up. Let's go ahead and expand this out just a little bit here. Oh, we're on vectors, aren't we? Yeah, that's why. <clears throat> okay, so it's on vectors right now. So I'm going to show you how this works. So it's going to stay at 10,000 feet. Let's go down here. And uh, I hate how it does that sometimes. Okay, so if we go to our legs page, you can see we're on vectors, but we want to go to EPKEY. So if we just click on EPKEY, put it in the scratch pad, and then click where vectors is, and then execute it. And now that's our direct two waypoint. You can see she's going to start making the turn here. She's going to stay at 10,000 uh, until, I believe it's until we get past EPKEY, right? Which one is it? Uh, no, that's that's saying we can go right up. So maybe we didn't need to do that going this direction. So let's go ahead and uh, let's crank this all the way up to 39,000. Come on. There we go. Click on it. See it change the thrust reference there. Now she's going to start climbing. And as we come above 10,000, we can take the landing lights off. When we turn off lights off, taxi lights could have gone off before takeoff, but it wasn't on the checklist, so I didn't bother with it. She's going to take her up to 310 knots. Everything's looking good. No problems so far. And our after takeoff checklist. Landing gear is up. There it is. Auto brake is off. It does that automatically. Uh, once we're above 10,000 feet, which we are, landing lights come off. So we're good on that. Seatbelt signs, we'll leave those as they are. And then when we get to transition altitude, obviously, we will set standard on the altimeter. Why is it freezing up? I don't know. But anyway, um, and let's see, anything else? Did we miss anything else? That's the entire checklist. That's it. That's all no more. And that means, you guessed it, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for some of that obligatory elevator music.
right, let's take a look at our arrival briefing here. It's the Barbecue 2 RNAV arrival. Starting out here at Razorback or RZC. Just as a quick side note, you guys let me know down in the comments what you think of uh, the color scheme because I can actually change this to daytime. Let's see if it changes. There we go. So there's the daytime uh, chart there, and then of course the nighttime. I kind of like the nighttime, I like it dark a little better, but if you guys are having a hard time seeing it, or enough of you are having a hard time seeing it, let me know. But anyway, uh, 101 degrees from Razorback down here to Igloo. Uh, hang a little bit of a right down to Sauce, then Barbecue. Uh, it is it is Tennessee, right? They're all about their barbecue down there. And then over here to Jamla, and then it's Vectors from there, but we'll probably just go from there. We'll go direct to uh, the start of our actual approach because we're going to be taking runway 9 over here, so our approach is going to start out here somewhere. So rather than vectoring out over here, we'll probably just go uh, go direct down over here and then on in from there. Pretty straightforward. Uh, we're not coming from the south, so we're not worried about this routing. We are coming from the north, so it says from barbecue on track 114 degrees to Fincher, then on track 114 degrees to Artie, then on track 128 to Jesse, then on track 120, and on it goes. You know what? It's really just outlining exactly what you're doing right here. So, ADIS is going to be 127.75. I don't think we talked about any of the frequencies on the other ones. Of course, we're not using ATC, so we're not overly concerned about it. And I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up for our arrival, so next briefing will be the approach briefing. Alright, we're going to be coming up on our top of the set here shortly, as you can see. I'll pop that up for you. A little, a little bit over 40 nautical miles there. A few things we need to do, so let's take care of this descent checklist. First thing, check and make sure uh, or verify the arrival and the approach in the FMC. So if we hop down here, and I don't know why that thing's out of whack as far as the view is concerned. Uh, there's our arrival, Barbecue 2, uh, then to Jamla, and then it's Vectors from there, Buddy, Felix, and then we're going to be taking the ILS into Runway 9. And I think if you go to Nav Radio, ILS 109.50, and I can double check. It'll go quiet here for a second. Let's just double check uh, where yet. That's the ATIS. Where's my ILS frequency on here? Ah, there it is, 109.50. So we're going to go on that. That's fantastic. And back up here and get my checklist going. Okay, flight instruments, uh, nav altitude radio sets. We need to set the altitude. It's going to come down to 2,000 feet. So I'm just going to set it all the way down to 2,000. It'll start the descent automatically, unlike the Airbus where you have to push the button. It'll just start descending, so that's good. Uh, transition altitude, we obviously won't set the uh, altimeter until we get below 18,000 feet, so we'll be good on that. Wing engine and anti-ice auto or as needed. We just leave it on auto. Not going to mess with it. Uh, push the recall switch. So we're here a little further. Recall. And nothing comes up, so we're good on that. I keep saying we're good on that. We're good. We're good. It's good. Um, where are we at? Oh, auto brake. As required. Mm, what's our runway length? Hold on. Back over to the chart. Goodness. Uh, runway 9 is 8,946 feet. We are very light. I see absolutely no reason why we're going to need any auto brakes at all. I know, a lot about a lot of back and forth on the windows, right? Um, okay, so no auto brake. Landing data, we need to take care of that. Come down here. It's bounce. I don't know why it's going way up there like that. It's kind of annoying. If you hit the uh, initial reference, it takes you right to the approach reference page. We're going to land flaps 25 at 142 knots. So click next to that on the line select key and then put it in that spot there. And there we go. So 142 well, my ear itches. There we go. Itchy ear. Uh, and <laughs> 25 on the flaps. Uh, what else? Uh, approach briefing. We will be taking care of the approach briefing here shortly. Boy, all of those are just moving around. Isn't that weird? It's kind of obnoxious, to be honest with you. Uh, we're going to take care of the approach briefing. In fact, in about uh, 10 seconds here when I'm done running my mouth. And then uh, once that's done, uh, I won't see you until we do the before landing checklist, right? Yeah, so sounds good to go. So we'll approach briefing then, if you please. All right, taking a look at our approach here now. It's the ILS or localizer runway nine approach, and uh, I'm still trying to get used to these Jefferson charts. You know, we really got used to the Lido charts for a while. There, I was really enjoying those, um, and now we're on Jefferson charts. And I don't, I don't have anything against these, but they're laid out very different, and so <laughs> you're gonna have to grin and uh, grin and bear it with me while we uh, while we work our way into these. Uh, as we mentioned on the arrival, we'll be going probably direct from. Uh, 
whatever that last waypoint was, I forgot already. Uh, down here to Buddy, and then to Felix, and on, on in from there. We already talked about the ATIS on 127.75. Memphis approach, uh, anywhere from 356 to 175 degrees uh, is 125.8. And if you're coming from 176 to 355 degrees, which that's going to be us, and it's on 119.1. Uh, talking to the tower for runway 9 and 27, 118.3, that is us. And then ground for runways 9 and 27 is 121.0. The localizer is 109.5, and the final approach course is 91 degrees. Uh, the glide slope starts at Felix at 1,700 feet, and the uh, decision altitude is 466 feet, airport elevation at 341 feet. So far, we're doing so s doing good here. We'll talk about the missed approach. Uh, if we do have to perform a missed approach, we're going to climb to 1,000 feet, then make a climbing right turn to 5,000 feet, uh, and then we're going to track. Uh, we're going to make that turn. You can see it the visual here. Don't mind me. It's early. <laughs> Make the right turn and then come out here until we can catch the outbound 151 degree radial out to Keys or Keezy, not sure how you say it. Uh, the Keys intersection, which is 10.4 nautical miles from the VOR, and then hold there. Uh, continue climbing in the hold until we reach 5,000 feet. That's your missed approach. <laughs> Pretty straightforward there. Taking a look down, whoops, you don't scroll it, you slide it. Uh, taking a look at our profile view here. If I can get it lined up. There we go. Uh, so again, a buddy will be at uh, 2,000 feet. Start our descent there down to 1,700 uh, for the intercept of the glide slope at Felix. You got uh, sort of your visual depiction here. Uh, this is your runway lighting. This is your missed approach um, information here. So there's the uh, uh, Memphis VOR, frequency 117.5, radio 151 out to Keezy, and so on. Uh, ILS 466 foot decision altitude so that's that's your uh, altitude above sea level 207 feet above the ground and let's see localizer if the glide slope is out runway visual range has to be 24 or one half I, I, is that 2400 feet or one half mile hmm not sure on that one maybe somebody can explain that one to me a little bit there's also circle to land procedures but we're not using those and again I still have to sort of get back into the swing of using the Jeppesen charts and you know what I've been out of this for a while and so I need to get caught up anyway and I'm way behind so I'm sure I got a bunch of stuff wrong on this but at least you get the gist of it right that is your <laughs> approach briefing let's go fly it and as you can see we're coming up on our final approach here shortly <coughs> we've already gone ahead and uh, armed the spoilers we've got the landing lights on that's actually uh, let's take care of our before landing checklist while we're at it below 10,000 feet landing lights are on speed brakes are armed seatbelt signs are on and altimeters are set we've also uh, come on brain function we've also armed the localizer there because we are going to fly in on the ILS because hey why not you know the aircraft will do it so let's fly in on the ILS right uh, and we're pretty much uh, r raring to go here, so speed's coming down nicely. Needed to come down just a little bit more, but I think we can go to that next flap setting. Let us see. Yep, we can get there, and that'll help slow us down a little bit as well. Remember, we're going to be landing flaps 25 at 142 knots, so we can bring that speed all the way down, because it's taking its time slowing down. You can see it's already grabbed the localizer. That's why it's in green right there, so let's go ahead and hit the uh, approach switch here. And in case you can't see that, that's your approach switch right there. That's so that it picks up the glide slope, right? So it's picked up the localizer. It's not on it. It's not on it yet. Okay, it's still got to get over here. That's what the diamond is here. You can see on our track here, we got to get over there a little ways yet. All right, but it has picked it up. So we can go ahead and hit that approach switch. And then once it locks in on uh, the glide slope, It'll pick that up as well. And by the way, the uh, Trip 7 from PMDG is absolutely, utterly notorious for being vicious on the frame rates. I don't care what anybody says. It is terrible on the frame rates, and you're seeing that right now. So, And it doesn't help that uh, Memphis is trying to load in there, but either way, we're probably going to get a bit of a slideshow. I do apologize, but such is life, right? Uh, not much I can do about it. So... Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's going to be a little rough, guys. <laughs> All right, uh, track iron coming on. Little jump here. Boom, there it is. Oh, come on. This is ridiculous. 
that's not even a little bit of a slideshow. That's like just absolutely ludicrous. What are we looking at here? Frame rates are at 20. See, that doesn't make any sense, does it? Oh, that speed doesn't want to come down, does it? Alright, let's throw those spoilers at. We're going to need them. Big time. Next flap setting. That's 15. Let's go ahead and get that landing gear down. What is that? What was that? What did we just fly through? Like I looked down and then I look back up. Wow. Okay, let's rearm the spoilers here. There we go, spoilers armed. Next setting of flaps. Gear is down. We're on the glide slope now. There's flaps 25. There's another stutter, if you will. Boy, this is not being friendly on frame rates. I'm going to have to figure something out. I'm going to tweak this some more because this is not doing well right now. Okay, so right now it's set to auto land. That's what land 3 means. Obviously, we're not going to auto land it. I'm going to leave the um, auto throttle on. But autopilot is now off. And you got to watch her because she likes to try and nosedive immediately when you turn that autopilot oh, wow. off and you saw that it just did that right there so yeah so we're a little below the glide slope now it's alright we'll get back on it Come on. there we go oh. come on Woo. Well, <clears throat> that trim takes some time to get in there, doesn't it? Oh, that's terrible. Sorry for the slideshow, guys. We're a little high. A little. Lord. A lot high. Oh, come on, enough of that. That's ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. Come on. Ugh. What a joke. That's freaking ridiculous.
versus don't want to kick in. Wow. Wow. Well, uh, other than the slideshow, I, I mean, I don't know, the landing rate was probably absolutely, utterly atrocious, but, I mean, that was just ridiculous. I, I knew it was going to happen, but it still annoys me. It's ridiculous. There's no reason for that. And you know what? I'll bet you I could fly in here in just about any other aircraft and not have that problem. Like, seriously. Are we missing the taxiway on the end there? So this is the FedEx parking over here to our left. And there should be a taxiway right off the end of this runway here. Yeah, I do apologize for the slideshow, guys. But everybody, every one of you knows my frustration. I have a good system, actually. I have a really good system. So there's absolutely no reason for it to be that bad. None whatsoever. Like, it's just ridiculous. But what are you going to do, right? Okay, so I'm just going through the motions here, doing what needs to be done. Ooh. Why is there taxi lines going? That's just crazy. <laughs> I'm sure that's probably the way it really is. They do a pretty good job when they when they put together these payware airports like these. And I know FS Dream Team does a really good job. I don't know. Now, I know the Trip 7 is vicious on frame rates. It really is. It's bad on frame rates. It's very, very, very hard on frame rates. And I don't know if um, the scenery is adding to it. I'm sure it is. Uh, but my experience with FS Dream Team has been pretty good. So I don't know that the scenery is adding very much to it, to be honest with you. Probably not. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't think the scenery is adding much to it at all. I think that for whatever reason, this Trip 7 is just horrid on frame rates. And I don't know if it's any better in P3D. Um, if you guys have used it in version 4, because version 4 is 64-bit, which is actually pretty impressive. So I don't know if it's any better. If you guys have used the uh, Trip 7 in version 4 and it's better, let me know. Maybe eventually I'll pick it up. Won't be anytime soon unless somebody wants to donate it to me. <laughs> That's a lot of money to donate something, though. Um, but the point being, of course, let's turn those taxi lights off. Um, if it's better, great, but I don't really know right now, so, sorry, a little frustrated coming in here, it's, it's obnoxious when it does that stuff, it really is, it's obnoxious to me, it's absolutely ridiculous, bring it to a nice easy stop here, a little bounces, well, maybe, how about a little freeze, there we go, a little jump as track iron comes up, oh, that, those weren't theirs we pulled up, what's that all about? <laughs> Come on. Whatever. Put the parking brake on. Jeez. All right. After landing checklist, we kind of, I, I went through what we needed to do as we came off uh, other than turning the APU on. So let's start the APU. Uh, landing lights are off. Strobe lights are off. Taxi light is on. And now it's back off. APU selector switch is on, which we just did that. Wing and engine anti-ice stays on auto. Auto brake should be off. Well, we never even turned it on. I didn't use auto brake. Uh, speed brakes down, they should be now, they are. Uh, flaps up, we brought those up. Transponder mode needs to go to standby, we didn't do that. So let's bring that down to standby. And that takes care of the after landing checklist, and that leaves us with just the shutdown checklist. Parking brake is already set. Taxi light is already off. Left and right engine fuel control switches can go to the cutoff position. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, nope. I'm retarded. Don't mind me. Those aren't the fuel control switches. Those are the pumps. Yeah, good times. That's what happens when everything starts freezing up. It's these guys here. It's turning off the engines. One and two. There's left and right. Seatbelt signs. Oh, it even freezes up doing that. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Seatbelt signs at the off position. Beacon light can go off. There it goes. Uh, nav light stays on. We never turn it off. C1 and C2 air demand hydraulic pump selectors. Go to the off position. That's uh, these two right here. Off and off. Uh, left electric demand hydraulic pump selector off. Demand off. Oh, sorry. That was supposed to be these two were supposed to go off, not these two. Boy, I'm all kinds of messed up here, aren't I? Primary C1, C2 electric hydraulic pump switch is off, so that's these two now. 
Good times. Right electric demand, hydraulic pump selector off. I don't know why it goes in that order, but it does. Uh, left and right fuel pump switches off. Now these guys can come off over here. There we go. Uh, flight director switches off and then APU selector as needed. So these guys can go off, off and off. APU can go off. Battery can go off. That should shut everything down at this point. And then to secure it, Adaroo goes off. Emergency exit lights go off. Any day now. Come on. Wrong way. Right click it. Oh, this thing's being a pain in the butt, huh? Hey, it won't even let me. Whatever. I'm going to leave it right there. <laughs> uh, let's see. Left and right pack control switches off. There we go. Off and off. APU selector switch off. We already took care of that. And battery switch off. We already took care of that. So I guess we did a little bit out of order. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is your full flight tutorial in the PMDG triple seven look i actually did a decent job parking all this stuff appeared after i pulled up maybe that's part of the reason everything was freezing up be nice if all that stuff loaded in long before you got here right did it just pull up where i parked it kind of did that's kind of weird looks like it, they just put stuff where i parked at anyway they're gonna offload the aircraft and we're gonna wrap this one up as always i appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos and if you haven't already done so please hit the subscribe button don't forget to give a thumbs up or a like to the video it makes it easier to find them in the comments or not in the comments but in the search uh... what else you can like us on facebook follow us on twitter and don't forget to follow us on twitch at captain mac three five eight eight sooner or later someday at some point sometime we will <laughs> get back to doing live streams but let's just get back to making more videos first. And I think that's it. That's everything for this one, folks. I hope that this video was helpful for you. Please put anything down in the comments if you have questions, concerns. If you have moans, groans, and complaints, don't bother because I'm not going to listen. <laughs> and that's it. Until next time, folks, as always, keep the blue side up unless otherwise instructed by ATC. God bless you all, and have a fantastic day.